Silas, please tell us about where you are from, where you live now, and give us a quick overview of your professional background, please. Hi, Louis. Yeah, okay. Hi. It's a pleasure. Um, I'm living in uh, Brisbane in Australia these days, which is uh, the capital city of uh, the state of Queensland. On the map of Australia, it's about halfway up on, on the right-hand side. Um, I'm originally from the UK and uh, been living in Australia about two years. I lived here on and off as well before. When I got married, I was living here for about five or six years and uh, spent a bit of time in Europe uh, and also in, in Asia, living in, in Thailand. Uh, okay. Yeah, and um, I spent some time working for a company, or most of my career really, with a company called Amadeus, which is a, a software company, it develops and uh, sells software to the travel industry and the airline industry. Obviously a little bit affected at the moment by the uh, present situation with COVID, unfortunately. Um, had a few other jobs as well, but I guess we don't need to go into all of those. And now uh, I have retired. I retired about two years ago now, and I've been eking out a living as a um, as a writer. Although I get a few pensions. Fortunately, I'm not surviving on the money I earn from writing, or I think I'd be very thin and hungry. So that's a problem <laughs> from me. Hi, Les. It must be great to live in Brisbane. I have never been there. Um, what would you say um, locals do for fun? And if we visit Brisbane, what is a must do? Yeah, well, Brisbane is a relatively small city, but there's still quite a bit going on. Uh, it's located on a river, the Brisbane River, where it gets the name from. And um, there's lots of nice restaurants and bars and, and so on by the river. Uh, you can also do some nice walks and bike riding and, and so on. Uh, people actually climb. There are some small cliffs next to the river that people climb on. We see them every day doing that. Um, otherwise, there's lots of theatres, museums, all that sort of cultural cultural stuff as well. There's a bit of a joke about Brisbane that the first thing most people do when they come here is to uh, is to leave because Brisbane, uh, is, it is the capital of, of Queensland, but it's in the, the southeast corner. So if you're visiting Queensland, probably you're going to go up to the, um, the Great Barrier Reef which is a couple of thousand kilometers to the north, or you want to go into the outback and visit uh, visit the parks and, and so on that are in the in the um, in the outback area. So people don't spend a lot of time as a tourist, I would say, when they come to Brisbane. But there are a lot of uh, people from overseas working and studying here, studying English. Lot of must do. Well, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Um, what would you must do? I, I don't know. I, I would just say just go and have dinner in a nice restaurant, looking out over the river, enjoying the fabulous climate, you know, which is about eight months or so of summer and uh, maybe a few weeks of the winter. We're in the middle of winter now, but daytime temperatures, centigrade, still hit the mid-20s. That's about 70-ish, I think, in, in old money. So, you know, it's still quite warm during the day. That's lovely. That's All right. That's great, Les. So tell us something. When did you decide to become an author? What inspired you to do that? Uh, when? Well, that's a good question. Um, I, I suppose, you know, really, I, when I was quite young, I wanted to write. I think like all, uh, <laughs> and actually not all, not many at all, but 15-year-olds in uh, in England, I was walking around with a you know, a copy of Baudelaire in my in my pocket and thinking I could write poems and stuff. Uh, I did have a go and I think most of them, my mother kept them for a few years, but I'm sure they've all, they've all gone now. Um, as far as this book's concerned, um, I wrote a few little stories about things and places uh, over the last four or five years, I guess, um, which I published just on Facebook or somewhere. And the idea um, to write a book came about... Um, because I'd written a, a, a tandem about 40 years, 50 years ago now, nearly 45, let's say. <laughs> uh, I'd written a tandem to Athens. I thought it might be fun to describe some of the, um, the details of that. I think we're going to talk about that in, in a bit more detail later on anyway. Um, so that's where the idea for this book came from. And that's when I started writing, really. So probably the last five years, really. As for why, I think it's, it's just, you know, you think you've got a little story to tell and you might as well tell it. And much as I'd like it to become a million bestseller, I, I <laughs> don't really have any, um, any, uh, any any great dream that it will. It would be nice. But it's just nice to have written down the things and a few friends have read the book and a few people that I don't know. I've made a few sales on Amazon from people who 
I've never met. So, so yeah. Mr. Stanley, um, can you tell us a little bit more about your book called My Brother's Bicycle? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you, you've got the title uh, there, My Brother's Bicycle. Um, the first question people ask me often is, why is it my brother's bicycle? So I had an older brother. Uh, unfortunately, he died about uh, five five years ago. And uh, just beforehand, he, um, he bought an electric bike. And um, that gave me the idea, as I mentioned earlier on, I, years and years ago, I rode a, a tandem with a friend from London uh, to Athens in Greece. And uh, we rode we rode a lot of the way. I wouldn't say we rode the whole way. So we took some trains, we did some hitchhiking, which is fun with a tandem, as you can probably imagine. Exciting, um, yeah. And I came up with the idea perhaps of, uh, of redoing that trip or part of it. I was living in Europe at the time, I was living in France. So my plan was to um, take a train actually to uh, Paris, ride from Paris down to the south of France mm -hmm. where I was living. And then as a separate um, separate thing to also go to London and just do the part of the trip um, between London and the uh, the Kent coast where I took the ferry mm -hmm. across to, to France. So that, that was the whole plan of the book. And then the idea was to compare the two trips. So me as a 20 something year old, um, devil may care and sleeping by the side of the road and whatever it might be, to um, a 60 something year old um, who <laughs> didn't you know, want to stay in reasonable hotels and eat well and have a shower every day and, and so on and so on. <laughs> and just the different way that you put the life and that kind of thing. Um, I think I was successful in doing that, but I didn't really have a book at the end of that because uh, at the end of, I wrote about 40 pages, I suppose, about the original trip and things that I remembered from that, <clears throat> including one photograph that I had. Uh, and the repeat part of the trip didn't really happen. Um, I think for two main reasons. One was my own uh, inert laziness in that I didn't really get around <laughs> for doing it. But also, um, if anyone's ever lived in France, they might be aware that the French have a have a little habit of going on strike for all sorts of reasons. So at the time that I was hoping to do the, the part from Paris, um, uh, not Air France, um, the French railways, SNCF, mm. had a strike, an ongoing oh. run of strikes for about three months due to something I don't remember. So getting to Paris was a bit difficult and the whole thing was getting a bit complicated. So um, did a little bit of riding with my wife just around the area where we lived, uh, went across to Italy and so on. So I wrote about that, but I didn't really have enough for a, for a whole book. So I also um, added some sections on some of the different places where I've lived and, and worked and some of the different experiences in my life as well. Um, which include a, a trip I did years ago to India and, and living, mm -hmm. working in, in Germany and, and so on, and London as well. Um, and I, I got a book out of that. So it's a bit of a mixture, really, the content, I suppose, of uh, bike riding and just general, um, you know, what happens to people in their lives. I hope people find it interesting. I think, I think they will, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So Les, this sounds very, very, very exciting. You know, most of the people that belong to this channel, they are into traveling. So I bet they would love reading your book. I have started reading the book already. I haven't finished yet. And I will probably ask you a few questions later on uh, about specific parts of the book. But for the people that don't mm -hmm. have your book yet, how can they purchase your book? Yeah, uh, it's available on Amazon, so they can buy it either as a paperback uh, if they want to, or as a Kindle. So I think nowadays, you know, Kindle is fairly common, and you can read it on your phone and all those kinds of things. Um, it's also available, but you'd have to be in Brisbane for that, from a number of uh, bookshops around the Brisbane area. I've had a reasonable success going around, and um, mm -hmm. what's the word? It's not spruiking. There's a similar word anyway. Um, giving it, uh, they keep it in stock and I get a you know, sell and return. So I don't suppose many of your re readers or listeners are in Brisbane, but if they are, um, and if, you know, if, if I'm coming to a town near you, I'm happy to sell you a copy face to face, but I think Amazon is probably the most, uh, most likely place to pick it up. That's great. And, um, uh, Les, I've heard it through the grapevine that you are working on a new book. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm trying. I haven't, uh, yeah, I'm trying to write something. I've got a few, uh, few ideas and then 20, 30 pages written down. So the latest book is, um, 
got a working title of Other Lives, which I think might have been used before, so I might need to change that. But And the idea really is, um, again, you know, it's all about me. It's um, instead of the life that I did lead, it, uh, it talks about uh, the possibilities of things that might have gone differently. Um, the Sliding Doors movie, people have, have read where if one thing had gone differently, if I hadn't got the job with Amadeus, if uh, my parents had moved to Australia before I was born and that kind of thing, then obviously my life would have been very different. Um, so, and I've used different characters. It's not just me. So they, they have, will have different names. And um, the idea is that at the end of the book, which I, without giving too much away, um, an event takes place, let's say, and all of these different characters um, all meet up at this event and kind of realize that they, their own lives, you know, could have gone in different ways as well. That, that's the concept behind it anyway, which I'm working on. Um, mm -hmm. Should be should be finished, well, uh, let's say six months, probably means a year, like all, uh, all plans, they always seem to take longer than they should. All right. By the end of the year. Great. I hope you can come back to us to uh, talk about the book when it's launched. Okay. So, Les, with your experience of writing books, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who is aspiring, thinking about becoming an author or a book writer? Uh, yeah, good question. Again, um, I think just to do it, you know, I mean, I thought about it myself. Uh, years and years as i mentioned when i was a kid really and a teenager in my early 20s i did a little bit of writing it was mainly bad poetry you know and so on um now that uh, a bit more mature i suppose i realized that i wasn't going to become another um, <laughs> another famous poet or another shakespeare but i think you've got to and write write within your own um your own uh, what's the word within your own border you know so just write about what you know is, is what they say um and just write just do it you know and editing is, is important uh, not only having what you've written edited externally by someone else but okay. you know self-editing it's called just write something and then in a day or two uh, have a look at it again and invariably you change it around i think you know we'd all like to do that with emails for example when you send an email you often it's a good idea to write the email keep it for a few minutes or a bit longer and then send it because you often yeah. think after you've sent it well oh i wish i'd said this or i wish i hadn't said that and so on well <laughs> writing a book is much the same it's a bit difficult with emails i mean normally you need to communicate straight away um yeah so as far as the process goes um you know amazon i was lucky in a way because my wife's written a few books so she'd already been through the process of uh, publishing through amazon which is, um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's difficult. I wouldn't say it's easy. They do make you jump through a few hoops. Um, so you probably, you can work it out, I'm sure, yourself, but you'd need perhaps someone to, to help out with that. Um, I, I, that's the way I've done it. So I know a few people who've tried to get a book published um, by a publisher. Good luck with that. If you can do it, you're probably going to make more money. But, mm -hmm. you know, everyone writes books these days. So I think the best way is just to self-publish, really. All right. Yeah. That covers that one. Very well. So you did have some help uh, from uh, from your wife and your friends that actually guided you in the right direction. Um, in terms of uh, education, um, would you recommend any kind of educational uh, direction uh, for people to follow to write a book? Or do you think anybody can write a book without any kind of... Um, educational background <laughs> well that's like singing and various other things anyone can do it but can they do it really you know can they do it well i guess um i i did i found uh, an online course that i followed actually um sort of creative writing type of course oh. um which i did for i think it took me about six months so it was it wasn't that complicated it just it was just some hint and tips hint, hips and what are they called hints and tips you know about not overusing the same word and this that and the other so that's probably a good idea but it's not really vital i mean you can just start writing and see how you get on all right uh, Lester stanley thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to talk to you in loose world i really appreciate that and i hope that uh -huh. uh, you uh, come back to us when you have your next book written so thanks a lot for yeah, uh, giving us this interview. 
Thanks, Louis. My pleasure. So I hope you have a very good uh, rest of Sunday. Uh, it is <laughs> here uh, 35 minutes uh, past midnight, so it should be 8.35 your time, Sunday morning. Sunday morning, that's right. Yep, just have to get a coffee and have a wander around the markets on Sunday mornings in town. Great. So thank you very much, and I'll be talking to you soon. Thanks, Louis.